So, Miss Oberon, tell me, how were you first cast by Sam Goldwyn? Well, um, Sam saw me in a picture called La Bataille, a French picture, where I played a Japanese girl. And I've always thought it was very clever of Sam to see me as a little English girl for Dark Angel, in spite of <laughs> the eyes pulled up and everything. Um, and also, I was very grateful to be in the picture because it was my favorite picture as a little girl. It was made originally with um, Ronald Coleman and Vilma Bankey, and I remember crying buckets at seeing it and was very happy when Sam said, I'd like to have you play. And, and you'd never seen him before that time? No, I hadn't. I had come to Hollywood and I was invited to dinner at their house, Mr. and Mrs. Gowans. And that's when he asked me if I knew about The Dark Angel, and I said, yes, it was my favorite picture. And he said, I want you to play in it. He said, but just as you look now, with no makeup on, which surprised me, because I thought um, the only value I had was with a lot of makeup on. And that was my first picture with him, and then he made, then he wanted to sign me under contract. And I was under contract to Alexander Corder, so they finally decided, I don't know how, but they decided to share me. So I do uh, six months a year in Hollywood and six months in England. And was it then Sam himself who was responsible for, as you say, changing your image? Yes, it really was. Was it, it really a was. gift that he had that was typical of him? I don't know, because I don't know whether he'd done it with other people, but I think the greatest gift Sam had was his exquisite taste. I don't know whether you found that looking at all his pictures lately. I think his taste was always so, so good and so perfect. For instance, um, Wuthering Heights, he'd never sacrifice anything, you know? He'd never sacrifice anything. He, everybody was cast... Every, everybody was cast with an excellent first-class English actor. He didn't, you know, say, well, I'll use this person in Hollywood because it's nearer and cheaper and that sort of thing. And people in England even believed that the picture was made in England. How was it made, by the way? It was, it was made mostly on the lot, wasn't it? But there were some exteriors. Um, no, uh, a lot of exteriors were made in Chatsworth. Uh, in the valley, which I'm sure now is all built over, but at that time there, was, there were these rocks, you know, the Peniston Crag, and oh, a very funny thing happened. They planted heather which they'd brought. And it, it had its roots, you see, and they just planted it in for the big, for the love scene, big. It was just the moment. And something happened. I twisted my ankle running down the hill or something, and a weekend came into it. And so we didn't get back to, to so-called Penniston Crag for about um, three or four days. And when we did that, Heather was this high. And so many people, English people, the only thing we can't understand why the Heather was that high <laughs> because in because it doesn't grow very high. Don't, don't, in England, it doesn't. Yorkshire no. Moors. No, no. But you had a Penniston Crag in the studio as well as the one outside, presumably. Yes, yes, we did, yeah. And yeah. Did you have a lot of that sort of doubling to do? Yes, because in those days, that's how they worked, you know. They, they thought that you'd be lit better in the studio and um, it was Gold easier to handle the, the elements. Goldwyn, uh, obviously, supervised very carefully what was going on on the lot. Did he come out on location with you as well? No, he didn't come out on location. But I know it was a, it was a wonderful feeling for me to have to work with Sam because I trusted him so completely and he was so much more fussy than I could ever have been. So I never went to the rushes. I let him tell me what and... Did you have more faith in him than in the director? Oh, um, no, I liked Willie very much and had great respect for him. William Wyler? Yes, Willie Wyler, yes, great respect for him. We worked marvelously together. But as I say, Sam was the one who got everything together. You know, the actors, the director, the sets. He was at the head of it, and he always got the best. When you say he had great taste, did he have taste in clothes as well? Yes, he did. Didn't you hear that? I'm talking to people. He was really very, very well dressed, always. What about the women, the actresses' clothes? Um, yes, uh, yes, yes, he did, because, yes, he did. Sam, Sam had very good taste. 
It's always conser it was always conservative, which I liked, so I was very happy. And were you fond of him, do you think? Well, he was a sort of a funny chap. <laughs> but I think I did have a soft spot for Sam. You know, because I, wherever I go all over the world, people talk about Wuthering Heights. They do talk about other pictures that I've done, but that's the one that seems to be. And so I feel that I'm grateful that Sam wanted me so much for it. He bought it for me and uh, set, set it all up around me. And... Um, he had a young English uh, actor in it as well, I believe. Called. Yes, yes, he had a... Well, he wasn't an unknown actor. He was very famous already at the old Vic, you know. And he'd done some movies. As a matter of fact, we'd done a movie together, Larry and I. We'd done a thing called The Divorce of Lady X for, for Alex. Just about, I think, a year before. But it was his first time in Hollywood, wasn't it? Did he find it difficult? No, he had come out here before. He, was, he had come out here to do... Um, uh, to play opposite Greta Garbo, and it didn't work out. He came out to do Christina, Queen Christina, as a matter of fact. So he wasn't new in Hollywood. Talking of things not working out, weren't you going to do a picture called Graustark at one point with Gary Cooper that was stopped? No, I never heard of it. That's another little piece of uh, encyclopedic <laughs> yes. misinformation. <laughs> but then the famous These Three from the Lillian Hellman play... Yes, that was very courageous of Sam, I guess, you know, to buy this play, which was, um, which he was not allowed to produce as is. Did you have problems with censorship on the picture of these three? Um, yes, I, I mean, I heard about it. I didn't have any problems, but I knew that uh, Sam had bought this play, which dealt with lesbianism, and one wasn't allowed to, to make a film of, of that, you know, on that theme. I suppose it was pretty daring that they allowed it on the stage. But um, he was very courageous. He bought it and um, had a script. I think Lillian wrote the script, Lillian Hellman. Marvelous script. And um, I think a very good picture turned out. I remember Audrey Hepburn saying to me, the day before she started shooting the, the Children's Hour, some years ago, I don't know how many years ago, 15 perhaps, as many as that now, or 12. About 12. Yes saying to me, I, I don't think they should do it again. They should just release the one you did. And they've now made Wuthering Heights again, of course. <laughs> I know. I didn't see it, did you? Yes. I didn't hear very nice. Oh, Willie Wyler sent me um, a review of it. And um, he said, you've, um, I've never seen anyone reviewed twice for one picture so often. Most of the reviews compared it with ours. <laughs> What was the hardest picture you did, do you think? A film called Song to Remember. It wasn't for Sam. I played such a tough woman in there, and it was a little... was really, I had to pull up strength from my boots. But for him? For Sam. Um, well, I suppose Wuthering Heights, because it was a lot of physical stuff, all that rain and, uh, you know, running up and down... Peniston Crag, and uh, and it was hard work. What, what did you feel working for him in his lot, in his studio, that it was a significantly different experience from working with other producers? Well, I had never worked with anybody else except Alexander Corda, so I don't, don't know. But I saw my other friends, all the, the actresses who were at MGM or Warner's or places like that. I saw that they just work picture after picture, you see. I just made a picture for Sam a year and a picture for Alex. So I didn't make that many pictures. But you did subsequently make a few more. Yes, yes, yes. Was it always an experience, therefore, the golden experience, one that you look back on as rather special? Well, no, they were my first pictures, you know, and um, so I suppose. What about goldenisms? Were there any of those in your experience? Yes, he once said one to me, and I, and I really couldn't believe he was saying it <laughs> while he said it. He got angry with Willie Wyler. Willie was supposed to do a picture I did called, um, I think it was Beloved Enemy. And they had a falling out or something, and um, 
and Willie left the studio and and I was Sam asked me to come to his office and he was telling me that there was going to be another director you know and he said he was so said, I'll never forget that while he said I am going to make him eat apple pie <laughs> I thought it was so lovely because it was so innocent <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that one before. No? Well, it's a, it's a direct one, you know? Yeah, that's Usually you read them and they're relayed and they change. Did you have, I mean, was we hear lots of stories about him being in rows and shouting at people and throwing people off the set and so on. Did that ever happen to you at all? Never, never. He never, 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 never got angry with me. I saw him got, get angry with Larry once. You must try to get him to tell you that story. Well, you tell it since he, just in case he doesn't. Shall I? In case he doesn't? Well, poor Larry had uh, got athlete's foot at the Santa Monica Bay Club. But he went to work, nevertheless. And um, he used to go. He was, it was apparently very bad, because I've never seen anything like that. All the legs bandaged up, feet bandaged up, and crutches. And uh, we'd been shooting for about a week. And um, Sam came on the set one day, and... Um, here was Larry with all his feet bandaged up and his crutches sitting in the corner. And uh, Sam called him over and Larry says he hobbled up thinking that Sam would pat him on the back and say this marvelous creature coming to work with this terrible infirmity. And instead, Sam looks at him and he says to everybody, this actor, he says, is the ugliest actor in pictures. <laughs> <laughs> this actor will ruin me, <laughs> poor Larry. And everybody was flabbergasted. He had seen the um, the rushes of the first few days, you see. And Larry was playing the stable boy. Well, Larry was doing it as you would uh, at the old Vic. You know, he really was dirty, and he really was a stable boy. <laughs> I think it's very sad and very funny. But Larry told, and he took it so well. You know, I don't. If he'd done it to me. I think I would have died. Well, that's, uh, I would never. People, yeah. yeah, I would never have been able to work again. I know. Well, it, he was proverbial for sending girls home in tears. By, really? By, yeah. So we've been hearing. Yes. And then not meaning it, and all the next day coming back, you know, and saying. Well, that Don't was very tactless because, you know, I've always thought it was funny because Larry was so marvelous about it, and told it so well, and it didn't. Uh, you see how he turned out in the picture. Absolutely incredible. But. When I think of it now, I think that if someone did that to me, I would just have to go home and never appear again. But Larry, I think, understood, too, that he had overdone the makeup, you know. I'm sure he... But still, that's not his responsibility, still, ultimately. I no, mean, it's no. the directors and the makeup people and the art director and all that. Yes, the, uh, there was many picture people, as you say, many people. I mean, Willie should have said it was too much. The makeup people didn't have to... Exactly. Many people are responsible for that. But still, he took it so well, and we all, he's told it so many times, and we've always laughed. And 